all fun guys foodies welcome to my kitchen it's COVID-19 coronavirus stuck in the house time yes by the time you get this you'll hopefully be getting really really close to being let out of your house again this is insane on our other show what happened to the world today which we are we I told you we we're thinking about calling don't know shit We've come up with a better name that's not going to be offensive to Facebook and stuff like that. We're going to call it the Don't Know Show. We still say don't know shit because yeah, we sometimes don't know shit. But the Don't Know Show. But still look up what happened to the world today to find us as we go up there. And we've been keeping up on this uh, coronavirus, COVID-19 uh, problem for well over a month now. Um, and of course, it's it's not done yet. This show is being filmed in the middle of well, second week of April. Um, by the time it comes out, it'll probably be the middle of April. But that's you know takes time to do this sort of stuff. Um, again, we're doing something that's not requiring the oven. As a result, I get to try using the camera off my cell phone again. It gives a much cleaner picture. I don't know if the the I don't know if the audio is quite as good as the other camera that I had up here. But uh, I definitely like the color and pictures here. It's much more accurate. Um, and of course, the up camera up here is the one that shows everything down here. Now, here's what we're going to do today. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Don't forget to shop the pig. Yes, Piggly Wiggly, Delavan, um, Lake Geneva, and Kenosha. My store, of course, is the Delavan store because that's where I'm located. That's Wisconsin for those of you who are elsewhere. Uh, I noticed that I've got some people all the way from the Philippines watching the show, which is really kind of cool. I guess they want to see how to make American food. Um, if you uh, find something that you like and you make it, uh, send a picture to me. You could uh, contact me through a comment. Uh, I'll tell you how to send the picture by email. Also, if you have a local recipe from your area that, that you think I can get the ingredients for, because you got to remember, some stuff we cannot get here. This is the Midwest. Eh, you know, certain things are hard to come by, but I will try stuff. Um, I just hooked up with, well, not really hooked up. That's a whole nother story. Um, I just met online um, a chef from Argentina. Um, and I invited her to be on my show. We'll see if she's going to go for it. It's going to be a little bit more difficult. We're going to use Zoom instead. I don't know if she's interested or not, but I would love to see how to cook some Argentina food. I have some friends from Argentina that I haven't talked to in probably nine months because I've been so busy and stuff like that and they tell me about the food that they're cooking and it sounds so good so I want to try it but anyway we're going to do something different boy there's that different again this is a perfect timing bread and dough maker apparently everything gets made all in one okay never used it before I bought this uh form um at an auction, it came with other things, and, and I said, okay, I gotta try this. Uh, so we're going to cook a loaf of bread. This is gonna be a two pound loaf of bread. This machine makes either a one and a half or a two pound loaf, depending on the ingredients. Because of the size of the yeast packet that I have, I have to do the two pound, because otherwise it's gonna be one poofy, airy, one and a half pounder. So we're gonna do two pound. This is what you're gonna need. You're gonna need, now here, if you don't have a machine, you can still mix the stuff here manually and then just bake it in the oven like you're supposed to. But this machine does everything. Theoretically, once I mix everything in here, close it and start it, I walk away and it's done. And then, of course, when after I got to that point, when we come back, we'll open up and see how it came out. This may be an epic fail. Remember, we're thinking about maybe having a fail once in a while. Since this is something completely new, this could be the one, folks. So let's see what happens. What you need is either a dough maker or you know a mixing bowl and all that kind of good stuff uh, and very very important you're going to need a drying rack um, you, you got to get it out of the pan pretty much right when you're done or it won't come out of the pan okay now um, you're going to need one and a half cups of milk plus two teaspoons or tablespoons to me, that's basically one and a third. So I just want a little short of one and a third because dang, I, it says you're supposed to be really accurate on these for these machines. I don't know why it has to be that accurate. As long as I've been cooking, I, I adjust things by sight, taste, feel. Always. It's just the way I am. A lot of people can't do that, so that's probably why they want you to be really accurate. But maybe it's because it's a machine and not a person. It has trouble dealing with inconsistencies. And that's how I like to cook. I like things to be a little bit different than the boring recipe. 
Don't get me wrong, some recipes are really awesome as they are, but hey, sometimes it's fun just to throw a little extra something in there to juice it up. Okay, uh, so we're going to need uh, start uh, the ingredient list, of course, is down below in the show more tab, okay? So I'll put all that in there after I do this. Um, butter or margarine, your choice, two tablespoons. Bread flour, four cups. Bread flour, not all porpoise flour. Purpose flour, I know that, but I like porpoises. They're fun. Uh, as a scuba diver, I've, I've swum with porpoises, and they are a blast. Uh, then, of course, you need sugar, salt, and yeast. Now, you can use, most people use the dry yeast. This comes in a package, active dry yeast. This happens to be a uh, two and a quarter teaspoon package. All right, and that's why we're doing the two ounces, or two pound loaf. Um, first thing you do on this machine, a lot of the machines, they tell you to take these out. This is what you're actually putting all the stuff into, but it doesn't have to be out in my opinion because you're not doing anything. So the first thing you have to put in is your liquids. In this case, in this particular bread recipe, there is only the milk that is liquid. So you pour the liquid in first. Pretty simple. Put that in the sink. Then you add the butter. Uh, the butter is uh, two tablespoons, which is basically um, a quarter stick of butter, right? Not too difficult. So you drop that in there. Then it says to add uh, four cups of bread flour. So here's our bread flour. Doo -doo -doo. Now, when you're measuring flour, this is how you're supposed to do it. You shake the cup, and then you run your finger or a knife across the top. You want it level. You don't want you want it level. There's nothing, no hump, no hole, nothing. It's flat. We need this is a one cup measure. We need four cups. So we're going to put the four cups right in here. One. Two, three, and four. Okay, that's in there. And using your knife, spread it around. Don't mix it with the liquid yet, just spread it around so it's semi level. Okay. Then it says to add the sugar, which is two tablespoons of sugar. I have my sugar bag out here. And of course, I've got my teaspoon measure. So we're gonna do two, or tablespoon measure. So we need two of these. And again, level. Just like that. There's one, and spread it around. Don't just pop it in the middle. And two. Okay, sugar's in there. Then it says salt, one and a half teaspoons. Okay, so this is what I like to do. Instead, I realize it adds just a little bit, but I'm gonna take the half a teaspoon and I'm gonna do this three times instead of once on here, one full teaspoon, simply because I'm used to doing this. So again, spread it around. You want it fairly level. You should use your finger or a knife, but on this, I'm pretty good at this because I've been doing it a long time. Okay, salt is in there. Now, it says, once it's in there, oh, I should have put the butter in the four different corners of the pan and I only got into one, so I should have sp split that up. I should read these more often before I start the show. I read it once instead of looking at it several times. All right, so that's all in there. So then it says to uh, add the yeast, but when you put the yeast, what did it say to do? Um, lovely ingredients, pushing some of the mixture into the corners, which we did. Place butter in the corners of the pan. That was my mistake. Uh, place a well in the center of the dry ingredients and add the yeast. So we're going to take this knife and we're basically going to swirl it around to make a well. Okay like that we're going to add our yeast I don't know if this tears it does not you have to cut these packages Zoop. we're going to pour it right in the middle of the well here just like that and then we're going to close the machine and plug it in 
Okay, it's plugged in. Now, I'll move this over a little bit so hopefully you can see it better. I don't know if you can see it there, but it says to make a select. On this, we want a large one and one and a half pound. I thought we were doing a two pound. We're doing a two pound loaf. I guess this is gonna be interesting. This only makes a one pound, one and a half pound loaf. So that's number two, so that's on there, and we push start. All right. It is now doing its thing all by itself. Don't have to do anything else. When it's done, an alarm comes off. There's a timer on here that you can check every once in a while. It says two hours and 50 minutes. So I'm assuming that's how long it's going to take to make this. It sounds about right. So just because I'm going to come back. Oh, no, not just because, because it's how we do our show. Um, I'm going to come back when this is all done. We're going to see how it comes out. Keep our fingers crossed. See you in a little bit. Hi, Fun Guys Foodies. I have a feeling that it was right. We're going to have our first fail. Yeah, not too thrilled because I really wanted to eat some fresh bread because I don't have any bread because I didn't get the grocery store because it's the wrong day for the grocery store for here. So, anywho, timer just went off. It's ready to go. So, it's hot. You have to use a glove. We're going to open it up. It definitely looks weird. So, there's obviously a problem. So, I got this out. I guess I need two gloves, really. Let's see. It's the first time using this, so it's a it's a learning curve. Let's see what we got. Well, it comes out right away. So, what does this look like? I have a feeling that the yeast wasn't any good. I should have looked at the, the expiration date on it. It expired three months ago. I didn't think it was that much of a deal because uh, most things are good past their, their date. But uh, when I noticed this was not looking right, uh, I went online and looked. And apparently yeast is one of those things that the date is accurate. So, um, I mean, this is probably edible, but it's going to be like like a, almost a biscuit thickness of roll. So, our first fail. Yay for you people that like fails. I'll even mark it as a fail. Um, I'll try to do this again. I'm going to practice. I'm going to try to make another loaf for tomorrow. I'm not going to do a show with it, but uh, hopefully I'll, I'll be able to get one to come out and we'll go from there. All right. Hope you enjoyed the, the fail show. Uh, remember, like, subscribe, and share. Check out What Happens to the World Today or the Don't Know Show. Uh, to find out about the fun things you could do during the coronavirus outbreak, uh, you know, quarantine type stuff. Hope you enjoy the show. I'm Fun Guy the Entertainer, cooking for you.